Hey there, fellow creatives. Welcome back to the Devotional Challenge. Tim Risto here. This is week number four, and my apologies for the extended delay between week number three and week number four episodes. Work just went crazy, and it was just a tough time to schedule and fit everything in. So I'm going to be working ahead here in the future on devotional episodes so that I can get them out the door and uh, and not uh, run into the scheduling issues again. So look forward to that here in the near future. But let's get right into it today. Today we're going to talk about sharing Jesus through our creative works and our gifts. Well, let's start with one of the Apostle Paul's creative works, huh? his writing. In his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul writes this, A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. We haven't fully defined what a spiritual gift really is yet in this devotional series, so let's start with that from this verse. You know, spiritual gift is the ability to do something beyond our normal human capacity. It's a supernatural ability given to us by the Holy Spirit. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, superpowers or magic or anything like that. It means that God, through the Holy Spirit, has granted us some unique talents as Christians that others can then see in us, right? These are gifts given to Christians specifically for the purpose of building the church and leading others to Christ or serving others in some some way, right? So every believer has some form of the Spirit at work in each of us. But it's important to note these gifts do not make us more important than others. You know, these gifts are not empowering us to our own ends. They're about God working through the Holy Spirit in us as a testament to the Lordship of Christ in our lives. Uh, for the common good, to help one another, as this verse says, but pointing to Christ as the source of that talent. Now, this is important because without this understanding, we as creatives risk our creativity and talents becoming you know, merely a, a passing hobby, an end to themselves, rather than a calling on our lives to share about what God has done for us. Which brings us to our devotion, really. How do we as creatives share Jesus? There are so many ways, right? And, and too many to even attempt to cover all in one devotion. So no matter how I cover it here today, I know somebody's going to come away being disappointed. Um, but let's focus on three kind of guiding principles or ideas uh, with some uh, biblical reflections included with them that will kind of allow us to strategize how we can work to share Jesus. And then I'll also give some brief examples uh, along the way of, um, of some other creatives um, and uh, you know how they've used their talents to share Jesus in kind of unique and interesting ways. So first, use your unique creative voice. Every creative has their own voice, right? You need to find it, discover how best to use it, and then explore and develop it. And this may sound like the antithesis of what I just said about pointing to Christ and not to ourselves, right? But if done according to God's word, it's not. True, our creative expression is not only about expressing ourselves or voicing our thoughts and feelings and using our imaginations, but about reflecting God to the world out there, right? Yet God created each of us as unique human beings. We are part of his creation, children of God, created in his image, out of love to glorify him by using the unique voice he's given us. In fact, in Psalms, uh, David wrote this, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Why were we each created? so uniquely. Well, to glorify God, of course, but it's through using and expressing those unique qualities that we do so. He didn't give us these gifts to sit back and let God do all the work, right? 
He's commanded us to recognize them as gifts from him, give him the glory, but then use them. We can share his story through our unique talents without us becoming the focal point of our creativity. In 1 Peter, we're told this, For you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. One of my favorite books of all time is The Divine Romance by Gene Edwards. He's a prolific Christian author who wrote many books, in particular, about angels. And that's part of the unique voice he lends to this book. Uh, it's a look at the crucifixion and resurrection from the point of view of the angels. It's a fascinating book, with some even comparing it to the works of C.S. Lewis. It's fiction, of course, but it's really unique. Edwards found a unique story idea and unique voice from which to create a compelling perspective through his writing. He does this as well in the Chronicles of the Door series, too, another series of books or thin volumes that he wrote. And I'd highly encourage you to seek out his books and give them a read. Well worth your time. Again, they're fiction, but they're fascinating, and they give you a peek and a perspective on things in a way that we may not have thought about things before. Next up is Create Boldly. Be confident in the talents and gifts God has given you and what you feel he is calling you to create or what you feel led to create next. Um, you know, be confident in who God has made you to be and live that out. Now, this branches off of the 1 Corinthians passage, passage I read earlier. Use your spiritual gifts, in our case creativity, so we can help each other. Or as it says here in 1 Peter, so you can show others the goodness of God. Don't be afraid to do that to use your creativity to share Jesus, to proclaim Jesus, use your talents to reach other people for Christ. We share Jesus boldly, not being afraid to share Jesus. There's so much latitude in how you can do that. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So maybe you start a YouTube channel and do devotions for others, similar to what I'm doing here. Maybe you start writing a blog, sharing ministry stories that highlight the value of people's faith in Jesus. Perhaps you create artwork that visualizes important concepts from the Bible in thought-provoking ways. Maybe you create music that shares about faith and how Jesus touched your life. Even if you aren't able to play an instrument, perhaps use a computer and digital loops and create something in editing that allows you to fulfill your vision and share your faith in ways you never considered before. Maybe you take a leap of faith and produce a short film that evangelizes, similar to how the Kendrick brothers have in their films, most recently in The Forge, which I talked a lot about. They produce films with an evangelistic message and are unapologetic about it, quite frankly, Kendrick Brothers are. They've also improved, you know, over their various films with sharing the message and not only bold, but very grounded storytelling means. Another example, more personal one, a good friend of mine, fellow Christian and creative Dave DeVore, who's been featured on my Creative Christians audio podcast, I'll put a link in the description below, shoots lots of drone video for me and my video productions. I'm hoping to have him do some work for me here on the Creative Christians channel in the future too, and eventually on a short film that I'm uh, working to develop. But he's also an awesome photographer. That's really his first love and calling. He shoots nature photography. Uh, he's very creative at it. And in one of his most recent photos, a Naturescape award-winning photo at that, he captured God's creation in an amazing moment, showcasing God's creation just by photographing it, capturing a moment that makes others stop and stare in awe of 
not only the photo itself, but the meaning behind it, that this is part of God's creation. Beautiful work. If you're someone who isn't in a creative role or directly creating something, perhaps you're in a support role, like a production assistant on a film set, someone who teaches others to produce creative things, maybe art or dance, maybe an audio engineer, or any number of other roles, you still have a gift through which others can see Jesus at work in you. How you act, what you say, your attitude, how you handle your work as a professional, and the way in which you conduct yourself allows others to see Christ in and through you. Don't ever underestimate that God will use you in this way. You know, finding your voice and your creativity allows you to be more effective in reaching others for Jesus. Third and last, invest your talents for the sake of others. Serve others through your talents. The parable or story of the talents in Matthew 25 provides insight into the importance of being responsible with the talents we've been given. Kind of like the with great power comes great responsibility idea, right? The trope that we often hear associated with so many superhero films. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Many of you are probably familiar with this story, but for those of you who are not, in summary, it basically is this. Three servants are entrusted with different amounts of money while the master is away on a long trip. When he returns, he finds two have doubled the talents or money they were entrusted with, while one merely hid the money away and returned it exactly as he had received it. This highlights God's expectations of uh, us not just to maintain what we've been given, but invest what we have to grow it and develop it. Now, contrary to popular belief, this is a story not merely about money. It's about stewardship of anything that we've been given, including our creative talents. If we recognize our creativity as a valuable gift from God, we'll be more likely to invest it in ways that grow it, develop it, and contribute to using it in meaningful ways for God and to serve others as well. CentralBibleStudy.com has a great article with Bible verses on creativity, and I'll link to that article down below in the description. But here's an excerpt from there about the parable of the talents that we've been talking about here. In this parable, Jesus illustrates the importance of stewardship in relation to the gifts we are given. The talents represent not only financial resources, but also our abilities and creativity. Each servant is entrusted with what they can handle, highlighting the significance of using our God-given talents wisely and creatively. The challenge is not merely to preserve these gifts, but to invest them in ways that produce growth. This calls us to explore our creativity, whether through innovation, problem-solving, or artistic expression. By recognizing our creative abilities as valuable resources, we can contribute to God's work in the world, making the most of what we have been given. Great stuff. I love that. As a creative, let me ask you, how are you sharing Jesus through your talents, your gifts, and your works today? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear some of the ways in which you're using your talents to share Jesus in creative ways. Let's strive to fill the comments section below with an overflowing of creative ideas that illustrate how we lift up Jesus. Okay, on to the challenge. All right, the challenge for this week is this. Create something, anything really, this week using your creative gifts and talents and do it to share Jesus in a creative way. Now that may sound daunting, right? We do it all the time, right? As creatives, and you're asking us to do it again now. But keep it simple, if you'd prefer. And maybe something as simple as a short poem that you can post online, an Instagram post. Uh, maybe it's a bit more involved and that you draw something that highlights your relationship with Jesus. 
Or maybe it's even more complex and you write a short song that shares about Jesus or even a short film for YouTube that highlights something about Jesus in creation. Or you can just keep it even much, much, much more simpler. But whatever it is, take a moment to celebrate and share Jesus in your life in some creative way. Next, how did you do on last week's challenge or week three's challenge? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Last week or the last several weeks really has been a big challenge for me as I was traveling right before um, all these things kind of happened and then busy much of the week and over the past few weeks on several video projects. So I found myself praying a lot in creative ways to thank Jesus for all he's done for me, my family, the work he's granted me, and the ability to continue to do what I love doing. Speaking of praying, let's go to God in prayer now. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for granting us the ability to do creative things, the opportunity to do creative things, and for granting us the gifts and talents to be able to create things for your glory and to serve others as well. Help me to use these gifts to share about you, dear Jesus, to reflect your light that you work through me to shine to others and into their lives. Help my creative works to do just that, to shine your light into other people's lives. Help me to discern how best to do that and help guide me through the process. May I lift it all up to you to be to your glory and for my edification as well as we move forward through this life remembering that our constant goal should be to bring others to your light and to eternal life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me today, y'all. Comment below if this devotion was helpful for you in any way today or throughout this week. I'd love to hear from you, of course. You know, have a great week, y'all. This concludes the uh, first four-part segment of this devotional challenge. I know I just got back from a break, but I'll probably take another break here, maybe about two weeks, maybe just a week, to develop the next set of four devotions, write them, record them, and then release them one per week. So stay with me. I mean, this is a new venture. It's taking time to develop, but uh, I tend to stick with it and, uh, and welcome any feedback, comments, uh, and the like in the comments down below. So much appreciated. Have a great week, creatives, and remember, above all else, stay in God's Word. See you soon. Blessings.